Welcome, everyone. Today, I'm glad to introduce our speakers, Hunter Willis, who's an account technical specialist, and Taylor Davenport, who's the VP of North America Sales for AvPoint. And they'll be walking us through a presentation and a demo on how to utilize AvPoint and Spectrum Protect. So I'd like to go ahead and turn it over to Hunter. All right, great. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here today, everybody. So we're going to start out with an intro to myself and AvPoint and talk a little bit about um, who we are and who we help, as well as a little bit of an intro to SharePoint and Office 365. And then we're going to be talking about, from the AvPoint perspective, from our backup solution, both for on-cloud and on-prem for SharePoint, what we do and how we do that, and kind of compare that to native Microsoft, as well as talk about, then move into right how that connects to IBM both for backup and lifecycle management, as well as um, some other solutions that we have. So a little bit about me to start. I have been a lifelong techie, and I am an account technical specialist, and I'm also a subject matter expert uh, for AvPoint and do uh, internal training and content development. So a little bit about AvPoint. We are the Microsoft Cloud Expert, not a title we just gave ourselves to. Microsoft refers to us as being their cloud expert. Um, and a lot of that has to do with the SaaS solutions that we've developed to work with Office 365, which our primary areas of expertise are the migration, management, and protection of data in uh, SharePoint on-prem as well as in the cloud. But we also touch on this for um, other solutions, and we have different connections for other you know, products and storage uh, options. Uh, obviously, the most uh, directly applicable of this is IBM's features. So we have over uh, 15 million customers. We support over 5 million Office 365 users in the cloud. Uh, listed are a few of the, the companies, both in the public and private sector, that we support. And as you can see, we do work with a lot of very large enterprise-level organizations. But we also have a partner network of you know, many, many smaller companies, all the way down to the you know, one-server SharePoint farm with just a few users, or that same level in Office 365, all the way up to close to an over a million users for different organizations. It's important to note that we also have won the uh, Microsoft Partner of the Year in various categories now for four years in a row. We started in 2001 when SharePoint was in beta. So talking about SharePoint specifically, SharePoint is a collaboration portal. It, on Office 365, it's cloud hosted, but there's also a server version of it, right? So the primary function of it is to be an, a serve as an intranet, and a lot of organizations just use it as a glorified file server, but it also has a lot of features to enhance security for sharing, and then there's also a lot of workflow process that can integrate with SharePoint. So you have the extreme where people are just kind of have it set up and use it to share out files and collaborate a little bit, all the way to it being the primary intranet with workflow designs, custom web pages, different applications installed, all the way, again, from small organizations to the enterprise level are all using SharePoint as their primary way of doing work. Now, in Office 365, as a cloud-hosted solution, right, SharePoint is just one piece of a lot of other functions right, that we have kind of listed here. There's Office 365 Groups, Office Graphs, but um, we also have the classic Microsoft Office products hosted in the cloud, as well as Skype for Business, which is video conferencing. There's Yammer for Enterprise Social, right? Of course, the email, right, as cloud-hosted applications for Office 365 continue to grow, um, there's more and more function and capability being added into that. And we work extremely close with Microsoft to make sure that we're part of that developer pipeline, right? When things are released, typically we've already been working on it for at least six months or so. Usually, and the goal is to have that support for those new products as they come out quick example of that, right now we're one of the only software vendors that can back up the files in the new features of Office 365 Groups, uh, which combines the functionality of SharePoint and email as, other application, as well as other applications in the cloud. And uh, the same goes for Teams. So to talk a little bit about the SharePoint ecosystem, many, many organizations are using this, right? There are uh, millions and millions of business users that rely on SharePoint for their day-to-day -day functionality. I'm not going to go over all these numbers specifically, but 
the idea um, is that the, the majority of Fortune 500 companies are using SharePoint in some way, shape, or form. So when it comes to uh, the kind of services that Microsoft provides, right? Microsoft is designing SharePoint as a platform service for um, organizations and companies, and it's an absolutely amazing uh, product, right? There's a whole ecosystem, groups meet, talk about it. There's tons of customizations that can be done with SharePoint, and there's an unlimited number of ways that SharePoint can be made to serve business purposes. Along with all of those features, though, there are some places where companies want to get a little bit more power out of SharePoint, and they can either develop those extra features themselves, or they can lean on a company like AvPoint to be able to have integration for that. One of the big areas for this is backup, which is where AvPoint started, right? They, Microsoft does have some features in SharePoint for their backup, but it's not uh, built out to meet a lot of enterprise demands for many companies. So on-premise, uh, there's not really a, a comprehensive backup solution for SharePoint. There's usage of the native SQL database API, but it's not really like a simple point-and-click interface. There's a lot that you have to do to set that up, and it can be difficult to restore items. Uh, for Office 365 and SharePoint in the cloud, the backup retention is 14 days, and there's a two-time-a-day backup that goes along with that. And the restore process is done as a service ticket, kind of an SLA, right, where they try to get back to users within a few days to do that restore. And the backup can only be done from the site collection level, which is essentially a large container. It's not, you don't get a whole lot of control over that process, nor the time when that process takes place. There's some other limitations there, too, like it's you know, difficult to just pull your information yourself out of SharePoint and there's not a lot of functionality to connect that the Office 365 tenant to other storage locations, right? So this is one place where, uh, and this is not just a place, but a huge place where IBM and AvPoint are much better together. Our ability to connect to that third-party uh, storage, which would be um, your cloud service, really gives people options about how they are going to back up their information. Have cloud service with IBM and are also having uh, some services through Office 365 for their end users. Instead of having to pay for cloud backup space or pay for an expensive uh, cloud backup service that doesn't give them control over the, how they're storing their information, right? They can connect their Office 365 backups directly to the IBM cloud. Now, we can also enable this from SharePoint on-premise and allow on-premise backups to the IBM Cloud or hybrid, right, which is the combination of an on-premise farm and some Office 365 information. So we're talking about, again, touching on this migration management and protection piece. As part of that migration, we're not just talking about moving information into the cloud, right, when we do this. For people that are already in the cloud, they can connect their backups to IBM. We're talking about your cloud service right now. And it's nice that people on premise can back up information in the cloud, but the idea is to go ahead, let them take uh, advantage of that ROI as soon as they can, as soon as it's convenient for them. And one of the reasons we're touching on migration through this management and then moving to the cloud and protection and moving to the cloud is that uh, the ability to manage data and protect it both now and in the future for organizations is a huge blocker for a lot of organizations when they're moving to the cloud, okay? And when I say blocker, what I mean is you all have run into the organization that either has some custom applications on an on-prem server, right, or they've got secure content. And in both cases, they're saying, look, we can't move into the cloud right now or at least that data, right, or that application can't move into the cloud right now. So what we're talking about is the ability to enhance the management of that information with new capabilities through our software and the ability also to see what information they have on premise, right, figure out what can and should move to the cloud and then lock that down and protect it not only during that migration, but also for the future. So we're talking about structuring the environment 
as well as applying additional security to the environment. There's a huge ROI in using them together, and we can do a lot of that on our end too before it even comes into um, IBM Spectrum space. So let's talk about how we are accomplishing this. So the idea is that our solutions from different angles and different uh, functionalities can utilize um, your cloud space right through IBM to help people manage and protect their data. So for our backup engine, right, we've talked about these native functionalities of Microsoft and this, uh, this management and protection. And now I'll make the transition, right? So what is AffPoint doing that's different than Microsoft? So we provide for our cloud backup a four time a day point in time resource capability, right, for all the information in Office 365 groups and the files behind Teams as well, and everything in OneDrives and SharePoint Online, right? And that's all with one license. I didn't even mention Exchange in that summary, okay? So this is the majority of the files and content that people have contained in Office 365 because all of those storage spaces, right, where they can interact as well as their lists and libraries, kind of like fluid SharePoint database information, that's all going to be able to be backed up. But we're also maintaining the metadata so people can keep when things were created, what kind of content is there, where it's supposed to be, as well as the permissions, who has access to it. When we do this restore, we can do a restore from the granular level from wherever they've stored that information and bringing it back into SharePoint, right? So one document will be restored either where it was or someplace else, right? And if they restore it where it was, that metadata is going to be retained. And no matter where they restore it, those permissions are going to be maintained. Now, we also have the ability, as we're backing up data with our solution, to compress and encrypt that data. So this adds a layer of security as well as a layer of management to the data, right? We're saving them on storage space and keeping it secure at the same time. Now, we offer this as a licensed package, right? This is a service, a cloud backup service that we're providing. By default, our retention time is one year and it's stored in an Azure blob storage space that we have, but we can connect to IBM's cloud services. And there is a huge discount via our license for that. And we call that your bring your own storage option for this backup service. And with that option, the customer controls the retention. They have a lot more control over where that data is being stored, how it's being moved, and how long they're going to hang on to it. Now, we offer uh, the ability to retain information for as long as they want to. This way, they have much more control over that information and how it's being managed. Because again, they're managing it through your space themselves. So how do we do this? Through our service, we support the TCP communication through the TSM format to IBM from the cloud. And we can also use FTP or SFTP if somebody's hosting a VM right, that has a FTP or SFTP service, they can also go directly via that. And what our solution does is creates um, a space to be able to put information from Office 365 into uh, that exists inside this storage uh, that we're connecting to. It's really easy for our solution to connect to that external information there. Uh, create the storage space and then begin uh, you know, storing that backup information from their tenant of Office 365 and the information that we previously discussed and put it into this backup space. And again, that's going to include the specific information around permissions and metadata so that they have full control over how their data is being stored, where it's being stored, and how they can bring it back into their environment. Now, if you look at cloud storage options, there are very few organizations that allow people to have backup as a service and control where it's being stored and how long they're going to store it. Most of the options are a just forever backup SLA, which, you know, from a business perspective, man, that's great, we can keep all our data forever, but at the same time, many organizations are charging everybody for a forever backup SLA. And it sounds great, but I don't know a whole lot of organizations that have to keep 
their backups forever. DocAv6 is our on-premise version of our solution. We're talking about now moving from the cloud to backing up SharePoint online. Important to note, though, that we can also manage a hybrid environment, which I touched on before. For SharePoint server on-premise, as well as for Office 365, right, we can back up all that information from an on-prem server. And we can connect directly to a Spectrum Scale object and other, you know, the TSM option is there, the SOARWISE family is there, and we can also use FTP or SFTP to connect to a storage space via a VM. There's a lot of versatility with this, and the idea here is, and the reason I'm touching on it, is again, talking about the drivers, right, for what's p keeping people from moving to the cloud, what's keeping people from backing up information and utilizing your cloud storage. A lot of people are saying, hey, I don't, I, I'm not ready to quite move to the cloud, but I've run into a lot of organizations that they're not ready to fully migrate into the cloud, no objection in backing up compressed data in the cloud, though, from their on-premise environment. And it's a start. So it's really easy from the hybrid environment here, from the on-prem server, they have full control over how their information is going to be backed up. They build out their backup plans. They choose specifically in SharePoint, which is what I'm showing over here, right? These are the web apps, the site collections, sites and subsites. Choose how all that information is going to be backed up. And again, they can do a restore from the granular level. Each individual document can be picked out with full fidelity of permissions and metadata along with that. They can also set up incremental backups, so they're not running a full backup every time they do this. And the incremental backups can just continue to run. Getting away from backup and starting to talk about some of the other things that we support here. We have an archiver solution that can archive and remove data from SharePoint. And this is significant both for in the cloud and on-premise, because we can, as the screenshot indicates, Right, we can pull information um, not just based on last access time, but also based on custom criteria. So just about any kind of metadata information that you can search for a document with, based on that metadata criteria, we can pull it out of SharePoint and connect to that same storage space that we talked about before, right, where we set up a storage policy, connect it to IBM storage. We can then offload individual documents based on custom criteria into that storage space. But it doesn't just have to be documents, right? It could be entire site collections, entire sites. Could be based on last access time. Could be based on custom criteria for, let's say, those five to seven year um, legal hold SLAs or data retention SLAs for secure documents, right? We can pull those out so they're not just sitting in SharePoint for everybody to be able to see where they were located previously. We can pull them out put them in external space so people can't access them, people can't edit them. They will be uh, retained as they were from the get-go. For that storage, though, for maintaining storage space, it's also possible to pull out information based on its last access time, right? And we call that stale data. So in this example here, I'm showing content that's older than 36 months, right? and this is for the cloud here, but content that's older than three years, nobody's accessed it in three years, we're going to go ahead and pull that out of SharePoint, put it in external storage space. Maybe we hang on to it for a month, right? So that if any users are upset that their data is now gone out of uh, SharePoint Online, that they can still, you know, maybe contact IT and say, hey, look, you pulled my document. I still need access to that even though it's old. Uh, they can return it. But maybe it hangs out in IBM storage for a month, maybe six months, and then is deleted, right? And that way, the customer is still utilizing your cloud space, still getting a better ROI out of Office 365 via the solution or from their on-prem storage, and at the same time, managing their storage. Empowering them in the long run is better for everybody. It creates opportunity for AffPoint, creates opportunity for IBM, and it prevents the customer from paying Microsoft directly for tons of extra storage because of all of this data that keeps accumulating in the cloud. Uh, for the backup itself, I just included this slide here for your reference in the future. Uh, there's a lot of custom parameters, and I've also included the user guide for the setup purposes right there. There's some information about how it connects, right, specifically to IBM storage spaces, and there's a link in this slide as well.
Um, all of our user guide for all the solutions that we're talking about are public on the AppPoint website as well. So you can go to the, uh, the resources user guide section there and uh, find user guides easily by topic. Let's hop into um, a demo really quick of uh, Archiver and our backup solution so that you can see more specifically what we are talking about here. Log into the solution here. And this is DocEv, and this is for the, the on-premise solution here. And DocEv overall touches on just about every single aspect of data management for SharePoint, including reporting, permissions, right? But we do provide backup and restore as we've been talking about. Now for on-premise, we do a granular level backup and restore that's designed to have more frequent backups of individual documents and I'll enable an end-user restore. And we also have a platform backup and restore, right, for the whole farm as well as some of the settings for that farm. So they can reproduce their entire farm if they need to back onto another on-premise farm. When we go into the backup and restore solution, really easy to be able to select the area in SharePoint that is going to be backed up, create a plan with a lot of specific options around how that's going to happen, right? But here in my tree, I'm looking at my site collection, my subsite, the individual lists and libraries here. And as I get down into it, I can see individual items underneath that. Now when I select this area in SharePoint, I want to back up. I go to my plan builder. Okay, and I have tons of options as to how this is going to be done. I can set a schedule, determine whether I'm doing full or incremental backups. I can choose what level I want to back up at, right? And then this storage policy here is how we're going to connect right to that IBM storage. As I go in there, you'll be able to set up the storage policy, connect to that space like the screenshot I showed you before, um, and then apply this form, this area that I've chosen in SharePoint to be backed up to go, you know, the backup data will be sent to that IBM storage space with all these specific options, right? You know, workflows, metadata, um, and whether or not they want to encry uh, encrypt or compress that data Right, they can combine multiple plans together. They can filter out information from the backup if they don't want that to go. Uh, to get into that um, storage information, right, super easy. Just with a click, I can go over here to physical device and create that connection to that IBM space, right? So I just go over here to create physical device, and here it is. So I have all these different options of which IBM has many, right? I have the Spectrum Space Store, West Family, TSM, right? But again, um, I could, if it's on a VM, right, and they have the capability to do this uh, within uh, a cloud space, they could do it via NetShare, but they can also use FTP. And from the cloud, the SFTP option is available as well to connect to that storage space. Okay, so it's super easy to set that up, select that storage policy, and then apply the plan. Now, they can also, from on-prem, combine as many different of these plans as they want to to have run so they can get extremely specific as to how that information is being backed up and what's going where. They're also going to get full reporting on every single item and container that's backed up as well as the status around that and those reports they can save for as long as they'd like. Now, when it comes to archiving, we can allow them to easily apply an archiving policy to any area in SharePoint. When I come into the solution here, you notice, right, we haven't built any of this stuff out by acquisition. We've developed all of this from scratch. The interfaces are all the same through all these different products. I can go into one module, another module, and it's all uh, very similar. When I select a node for an area in SharePoint, it is extremely easy for me to go ahead and create a rule. Now, in SharePoint on-prem, I can create um, a content lifecycle mode where I can directly apply a kind of a story to content management, right? If I say stale data here, I can come down, say I want to archive a document, and we're going to say any document that has a last access time that is older then uh, let's say three years is the example I gave before. I can add that here. Now, if I also want to do uh, like a custom column text where like legal hold matches 
yes, I can then use and or logic to manage this data with as much custom criteria as I want to add to this. With this solution, we're talking about, again, managing this life cycle of data. So if I want to like first tag information from SharePoint, right, I can just say, look, let's, let's first, we're going to tag it as archived, but then we can add a stage to this and then maybe remove it after a certain other period of time and then put it into a storage policy. So I can say then archive and remove data and here's this option for a storage policy. Where am I going to remove that data? This can go right into IBM Space. They can manage their SharePoint data using IBM Space and determine how they want to do that, what that looks like for them. There's no need for people to come into the solution and keep adjusting it, right? Now they can set up approval processes around what moves. They can uh, restore information. If they are archiving documents into the cloud, they can restore it directly back into SharePoint on-prem or online, right, via this solution. And we're going to keep a database of how all that information is managed and stored uh, for that very purpose. It's also possible for us to offload large objects into a storage space. If they have an Enterprise SQL license and they want to uh, use RBS technology to, let's say they have a lot of video files or something they're managing on-prem, then they can offload the um, binary logic object information right into the cloud, uh, which in some cases is quicker and convenient. Some people are doing that, but they could also use IBM Space for that. For our SaaS solution, um, it looks very similar. We have the capability, again, of connecting to that IBM storage space, right, for the backup solution. Now, it's not quite as much setup, right, because we're offering a service, and the endpoint for that service can be IBM, but just to demonstrate, what you're seeing here is um, DocAv Online, which is part of our SaaS online offering. We're the uh, only Microsoft solution right now that's being hosted as software as a service in the Azure cloud along with Office 365 that manages information for SharePoint Online and Office 365, okay? So that is unique and it provides us the capability to operate much more seamlessly as far as the backup goes with Office 365. And again, I can create this physical device here and set up to connect to that TSM space. And I can also use FTP or SFTP to connect to that IBM space if they have a VM set up in the cloud. Moving back to the presentation here, we can go ahead and start talking about this management of data and our compliant migration, right? And this is really going to bring everything home as I talk about it because um, what we're going to touch on here is our compliance guardian solution. And what compliance guardian is adding to this story is the ability to get over the roadblock of moving to the cloud. All at once, it can address so many concerns that customers have before they're willing to move their data into the cloud. Because even at the enterprise level, even really big IT departments, right, a lot of times they don't know what information they have and where it is and how much of it is secure data that shouldn't really be made public, and there are tons of fears around moving to the cloud. I actually just yesterday gave an example of a customer that I talked to. They were going to move to the cloud during the process of their data discovery. They found that they had about 800 gigs that they were going to move to the cloud, about 300 of it. Someone had uploaded their, their home movies right to their SharePoint environment, uh, was storing them there. They it found that, you know, it turned out that they, they didn't need to move that information. It's not just about security, right? It's about what is there. When you start getting into what's got a social security number in it, right? What has confidential information in it? Maybe what has um, information in it that a competitor shouldn't be able to see. When you start throwing in things that are coming down the pipeline like GDPR, where any classified data from, or any PII from a European citizen that is accessible publicly can cause huge fines for any company in America, right, that is doing business with a European citizen. They don't have to be located in Europe. We have over 40 pre-built scans for all the major U.S. legislation, European legislation, Canadian, 
uh, British, German, specific, um, Australian as well, that are built out into our solution to be able to find documents and information that are subject to these kinds of regulations that are secure and then also manage them. And then also the fact that the solution is not just about reporting and managing information, it also turns this security and structure process into a workflow where a document is uploaded, it can be assigned to an end user or someone on the security or IT team to review. And then, uh, you know, you can choose whether you want to quarantine it, tag it, redact it, right, move it in the, out of the environment. They could move it into uh, TSM storage, for instance, right, move it into another storage segment outside of SharePoint, maybe outside of the database where it's being stored. Thank you for your time today. I'll turn it over to Taylor Davenport to answer questions, and I'll still be on the line if I am needed. Excellent, Hunter. Thank you so much. Um, this is Tricia, and I did see two questions come in that Taylor sent me the answers to. The first was, does DocApp provide all the functions discussed for Exchange as well as SharePoint? And Taylor provided me the answer that AppPoint Online Services, SAS, can backup restore all Office 365 assets, Exchange, SharePoint Online, Groups, OneDrive, et cetera. Anything either you want to add to that? Um, I think on, on, this is Taylor, on the app point side, I think that uh, that covers it fairly well. Um, and similar to the backup is also with the arch archival piece. So if we're doing an archival of um, anything from O365, uh, SharePoint Online, or even physical uh, file shares, um, we can do archival of that to uh, IBM Spectrum as well. Okay. And then the next question that came in was on licensing. Taylor responded that AppPoint Online Services is priced per user as a yearly subscription from AppPoint. Anything else you want to add to that answer or question? Uh, no. And then for as far as it goes with anything um, on-premise, um, under current contract between AppPoint and IBM, um, it's based on uh, supporting backup and recovery or archival for um, on-premise environments. Um, we do have an agreement with IBM that it is a um, server-based, um, and that's based on the amount of SharePoint servers. So we'd have you know, our doc app agents on those servers. Uh, so that would essentially be the multiplier from a pricing perspective. Okay. And then a question came in to um, specify which backup and restore products are resold by IBM. Our, our current agreement um, is IBM can resell our uh, backup recovery for on-prem or slash hybrid, where we can actually cut across and, and do backups of uh, SharePoint Online and OneDrive in Office 365. Uh, so IBM has the capabilities to purchase those licenses. Great, and that's all the questions I see in the queue. Anything else you'd like to um, say before we wrap it up? No, I, first off, I appreciate everyone uh, when taking the time to join us today. Um, in the event that you have any questions, um, technical or on the sales side, feel free to reach out to myself, um, Taylor Davenport, taylor.davenport at appoint.com. Great, and thank you so much. These 